So I have been wrestling with a set of ideas that have stemmed from Wednesday's presidential press conference by Donald Trump following Tuesday's midterm elections and specifically regarding an exchange between President Trump and a reporter in which Trump essentially considered a question asked to him to be a racist question. And I kind of wanted to unpack that exchange and explain um, conceptually why I think that everything that happened in that exchange is very problematic and something that I believe happens very frequently in our world, especially in our political world, and which holds major consequences because of this. Um, I want to mention that I don't definitively believe all of this. These are just ideas that I've been sorting through in my head, and I feel like they're inherently flawed, probably in a few ways. Um, but I did just want to get this out there uh, to see what people thought and maybe have a discussion about it. So, here goes. And you know what? We can't have that. You know, they have a word. It sort of became old-fashioned. It's called a nationalist. And I say, really, we're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. Nationalist. Nothing else. Use that word. Hi, Mr. President. Yemi Shell Center with PBS NewsHour. Um, on the campaign trail, you called yourself a nationalist. Some people saw that as emboldening white nationalists. Now people are also I saying that the president. I don't know why you'd that say that. That's such a racist There question. are some people that say that no. now the Republican Party is seen as supporting white nationalists oh, because I don't of your believe rhetoric. That. I don't believe that. So we have seen from those two clips um, the origin of where this all started, where Trump claimed himself to be a nationalist, and we've seen the exchange between Trump and PBS journalist Yamish Alcindor. Um, and I just wanted to break that down a little bit and show how our thought processes are flawed in many different ways and how our language shapes our reality, but how language is inherently flawed. Okay, so check this out. So here is the quote from Trump. You know, they have a word. It's sort of become old-fashioned. It's called nationalist. And I say, really, we're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. Nationalist. Nothing wrong. Use that word. Use that word. So here is where the problems start because he is using a word that has a lot of a lot of different meanings depending on who you ask. And in my opinion, what I think is happening here is Trump is trying to bring power back to one of the definitions of nationalism that may have fallen by the wayside in recent times. So we'll take a look here. All three of these, if you type into Google, which, you know, billions of people around the world use, and you type in simply define nationalism, you'll get these three definitions. And if you look closely, you'll see that there's already some problems here. So the first definition that comes up is a patriotic feeling, principles, or efforts. And the next thing is an extreme form of this, especially marked by a feeling of superiority over other countries. <laughs> Now, this is really heavy, right? Because the word means something and also the extreme form of that same thing simultaneously, which is quite unique. Um, and as you can see, if, the, if what is meant to be 
the definition intended is not explicitly mentioned, then we can either see it as the first definition or the second definition. Um, we also have a third one here that says the advocacy of political independence for a particular country, um, which could have connotations from both or either of the first two definitions. So you could advocate political independence because you have patriotic feeling principles or efforts, and you can advocate political independence um, because you believe your country to be superior. So both of those things can apply depending on the situation. So next, we have the question from Yamish Alcindor um, at the press conference. And this is verbatim here, although there were interjections, obviously, that you've seen in the video where Trump is kind of talking over her. But if we stitch together her words um, and put them, you know, uh, in secession without those interjections, this is what would come out. So, on the campaign trail, you called yourself a nationalist. Some people saw that as emboldening white nationalists. There are some people that say now the Republican Party is seen as supporting white nationalism because of your rhetoric. So at this point, I just want to give some opinion here. So I think that this line of questioning is flawed um, in a few ways, and I see this quite a lot. Um, the phrase some people is very vague, and there's a lot of power in vagueness um, when used especially when talking about complex issues. So in this situation, Alcindor mentions some people. Who are these people? Because of the vagueness of those two words there, the some people could refer to white nationalists. It could refer to opponents of white nationalism. It could be both. It could be a couple guys down the street. It could be just some people that she's talked to. It could be hearsay or stuff that she's assumed, given inferences from the context. So we don't really know who these people are. Um, and that's just opinion right there as to why I think that might be an issue. But let's just unpack um, some of the logic and some of the leaps that were made by these so-called some people to arrive at certain conclusions. So here we have my version of what the logical processes of these some people might be, right? So let's take a look. So these some people, they're operating under the assumption that what Trump said is definitively true. So put logically, Trump equals a nationalist. Now, here comes the first leap. So we mentioned before the multiple definitions of nationalist. And we saw the problem inherently in the definition that the word also simultaneously means the extreme form of the word. And so the leap here from these some people, and this is an inference by me, so it proves that we need to rely on inferences because meaning isn't always explicit, but inferences can be incorrect. And when blown up to a proportion, they can become a huge problem. So let's check this out. So the nationalist equals the extreme form of it, right? So that is what is inferred by these so-called some people. Trump is a nationalist. That must mean it is the extreme form of the nationalist. And to be fair, the definition of nationalism in the public sphere, especially in America, is more commonly, maybe more commonly known to mean that extreme form because of people in the 20th century, such as Mussolini and Hitler, who are referred to as nationalists and are the extreme form of these nationalists. So it is assigned to, you know, extreme far right and far left politics. So it's not a huge leap because that is what the definition is, but it is a leap nonetheless. So we have Trump equals the extreme form. And here is where this leap just comes out of nowhere. So the extreme form can just be you're feeling superior, right? Your country's better than other people. So this inference makes an even grander leap that is this extreme form is specifically 
the extreme form of nationalism that is white nationalism, meaning obviously that white is the superior race and that the country of America should be, you know, championed by white individuals. So that's a leap. And that leap means that Trump equals a white nationalist through the lens of these some people as inferred by me. Okay. So the next leap with that question, right? So we operate under the assumption that Trump is a Republican, right? Trump equals Republican. Technically correct, you know, technically correct. And now if we go back to this set of logic, we see Trump equals Republican and Trump equals white nationalist. Now here comes another leap. He said that some people, I mean, Alcindor said that some people think that the Republicans are advocating white nationalists. And through that inference, right, these some people believe that Trump, who is, to them, a white nationalist, is definitively Republican, and they make a leap here that Trump represents all Republicans, right? Because Trump is in power, he is part of the Republican Party, so there's a leap here that Trump equals all Republicans. That leap turns into that Trump, I mean, Republicans are white nationalists, right? Because Trump is a white nationalist, Trump represents the Republican Party, and because he's a part of the Republican Party, the Republican Party has an agenda that emboldens white nationalism. So, right, the perceived subtext of Trump's quote here, right, so the perceived subtext from this line of thinking is that when Trump says, I am a nationalist, what he means is, I am a white nationalist. Now here is a potential set of logic that I inferred, right? So this is my inference, and it could very well be incorrect. But as I mentioned before, we often necessarily need to make inferences because meaning is not always explicit. So this is my perceived train of logic from Trump's perspective, right? So, in Trump's mind, Trump is a nationalist. He said it, right? His definition of nationalism may be a combination of the first and third definitions that were mentioned. So, he believes himself to be a patriot, an advocate of independence, and that's an amalgamation of the first two definitions. Now, this is obviously an inference, right? I can't know this for sure. But through this train of logic, we can understand possibly why this exchange ended um, the way that it did and why it caused so much controversy. So, through this train of logic, nationalist to Trump is the same thing as patriotism. So, through Trump's lens, being a nationalist means that you are a patriot, right? Trump equals patriot, right? So, let's take a look at this train of logic right here. So, Trump is a nationalist and Trump is a Republican. These things are true for, you know, technical purposes, we'll say. And here is where things start to delineate, okay? Because this is different because of this train of logic. Through Trump's lens, nationalism can't mean white nationalism because to him it means patriotism, right? And because of that, Trump, through his lens, is not a white nationalist. He's just a patriot. He supports his country first, right? Then, Trump is not representative of all Republicans. Trump doesn't equal all Republicans. Therefore, all Republicans are not white nationalists. So that might be what Trump is perceiving this question from Alcindor to mean, right? So look at the perceived subtext of the interviewer question. From the lens of Trump, through my inference, through my lens, what I think happened is Trump assumed that because of the way that the question was formatted, that she is suggesting that Trump is a white nationalist and that Republicans are, you know, white nationalists because of this. That all ties back to that train of logic before, right? And so Trump calls that question racist. So take a look here, right? Trump equals a nationalist. 
But in his mind, Trump does not equal racist. And in his mind, he does not represent all Republicans. So all Republicans can't be racist. So the suggestion that he is racist and that his party is racist to him suggests that the question itself is a form of racism aimed toward him, right? So, <laughs> pretty fucking complicated. Now, if I haven't lost you yet, here is where I probably will lose a lot of people, including myself, because I'm trying to describe an abstract here, and it's really difficult given these dimensions. All right, so... Why I think this type of exchange is a problem is because these inferences cr create realities um, because some people believe certain things to be true, they, their world, right, is a certain type of reality, is real to them, right? So here, essentially look at this bigger bigger picture here as a circle. Um, now I have the gaps in it because this is my representation of reality. And in my interpretation of reality, there are all possibilities. And so the circle can't be closed off because it is always expanding to um, encompass any and every possibility. So this, I guess, is a representation of the infinite amount of realities that we can have. Um, all right, so this smaller, smaller circle, we can call it here, this is a representation of a reality in which Trump is a white nationalist, right? This is from the inference that being a nationalist, saying he's a nationalist, means that he is a white nationalist. And it could also be an idea set that also encompasses that he that all republicans are white nationalists as well now this gets really complicated and it's hard to show on a piece of paper because this is just a one-dimensional representation of something that is infinitely dimensional so really in these gaps there are infinite realities and idea sets that intersect um, infinitely it's really hard to describe it but picture this right so, within this infinite amount of possibilities, there is this reality here where Trump is a white nationalist and all Republicans are white nationalists, right? Because of the magnitude of this exchange, right, it's on TV, it's important because it's the president at the White House and it's a press conference. There are millions and millions of people that are exposed to this idea, right? So these millions and millions of people are making a bunch of inferences. One possible reality stemming from these inferences is this one, the representation that Trump is a white nationalist and that all Republicans are white nationalists. These smaller circles inside of this circle, inside the bigger circle, to me represent each person's perspective. Um, I only drew four, right? So four people. It could be representative of you know, a ton of people. I couldn't draw all of it, obviously. But the more people that are exposed to this idea, right, the more rep people represented inside this smaller circle, the bigger this circle gets. And this circle encapsulates a bigger space inside the realm of infinite possibilities, right? So because it is broadcast to so many people, more and more people live in the reality where Trump is a white nationalist and all Republicans are white nationalists. Their inferences, compounded by the exposure, the amount of people that are watching, cause this reality to grow. Now, obviously, you know, maybe not obviously, but this reality can be infinite, right? It's intersected by a ton of other realities. But the more people that believe it, the more this reality grows, right? A major problem with this, and the big problem that I see, is this reality may or may not necessarily be true. 
it's definitely not the baseline true reality and that's very difficult to explain maybe impossible to explain with words but it's problematic because the more and more people that are in this circle right that equate Trump with being a white nationalist and Republicans with being white nationalists in this circle are people who think that this is good and people who think that this is bad right so there is fear that grows inside this view right if you think Trump is a white nationalist and you think all Republicans are a white nationalist and you are against white nationalism as you should be right and you see it as a huge problem then there is a lot of fear because the leader of the American you know of our country is perceived as being a white nationalist and that creates tons of fear and this reality is pushed out and encom encompasses so many people because of the exposure because of how many people are tuned into this exchange and have access to this information right so it can cause a lot of fear or it can also cause a lot of hope right and this is hope from the people who are white nationalists actually right who are white nationalists and see that okay in this world trump is a white nationalist and republicans are white nationalists and the republican party right is controlling to some extent or at least is in charge in terms of represented by the president and that's good for them right because the leader to them is a white nationalist and he's in the most power and his party is full of white nationalists and they're in power and that creates hope for them and fear for the people who disagree right but this is all based on inferences it's not based on actual reality it's based on those jumps of logic so that is just a breakdown there um obviously that's really complicated and i tried my best to verbalize what's going on there but it's difficult you know our language is not definitively good um it can also make things very very difficult and because we assign different meaning to words and there's no definitive agreed upon meaning for almost anything everyone has their own personal definition for what a word means this creates infinite amounts of realities where our inferences about what words mean create these worlds where certain things mean certain things as it pertains to us um, that can be very problematic as I hope I've displayed because those realities can be based on inferences and those inferences might not necessarily be true um, and the more people who are exposed to realities that might not necessarily be true can be problematic especially if it incites fear and it can be fear from either group um, and right so that kind of just compounds on itself and I see this happening quite frequently in our world and until we address our flaws in our own thinking right the way that we process things um, we're gonna keep being scared and there's going to continue to be this crazy division that we see in our modern world um, I hope this makes some sense and I'd love it if anyone wants to talk about it because I've been thinking about this quite a bit peace